If you were starting a YouTube channel in 2024, what would you do? You have to start messy. What if my first videos suck? They will. Your first videos will be your worst videos. You know, you'd be terrible. One of the biggest mistakes that people are making is they're not knowing what matters most on YouTube. One of the biggest opportunities if you want to succeed on YouTube is you got to just press record. So Sean, if you were starting a YouTube channel in 2024, what would you do? Especially considering that you've been in the YouTube game for 17 years now, you've started multiple channels, three silver play buttons. How would you get started in this new year? Yeah, so I wrote down five things when I thought about this question. And the first one is courage. You have to start messy. Really the first thing that holds us back is our self and our fears and our mindsets. We feel like we're not ready. We feel like, man, is anybody gonna care? We feel like, am I gonna be judged? Is there gonna be negative comments? And these are all legitimate mindsets, but you're not gonna get results if you don't start. You're never gonna know if you don't start. Everything that you want in life is outside of your comfort zone. And I would encourage you to just start posting videos. Just try something, don't overthink it. Because we do learn by doing. And I know for me, because I didn't have fierce clarity when I started, I just started posting random videos on my Sean Cannell channel. There's a million lessons of mistakes I made, but the benefit of that was I started to learn how to film. I was learned how to edit. I experimented with this topic, that topic. And even though the brand ended up being kind of not great and the niche wasn't really clear and I was all over the place and that wasn't my successful YouTube channel. I haven't even uploaded there in years. It was a personal development experience, a skill development experience. And I like to say I have four YouTube channels that helped me eventually start a successful one. So absolutely, in 2024, start as soon as possible. Don't put it off. Don't just watch YouTube videos. Don't just consume information. We learn by doing. Take action. Press record. You got. It takes courage. You got to get uncomfortable. So just start. So this is one of the most common pieces of advice that you give people is that they have to just start. And so it might sound like the kind of thing that we just kind of push this eye like, yeah, yeah, of course, Sean's going to say that. But I would just challenge everybody who's listening to this like, yeah, but have you actually done it yet? Because it is actually so underrated that you just have to keep doing it and keep doing it week after week, right, Sean? And so it's that showing up every week, even though you are afraid or it hasn't been going as well. So continuous courage. And so what is point number two? Yeah, so point number two is clarity. If we're talking about how do I start a successful YouTube channel from scratch, one of the most underrated things is getting your niche right, getting a to your topic right. And don't let that be confused with starting messy. And don't let that be confused. Nobody wants to hear this, but you, let's say you started a YouTube channel wrong. I think that's still okay. It never really worked. You did 50 to 100 videos. One of the most painful things could be pivoting your niche or starting a second channel. But people make the mistake that a lot of times that's what it takes to find success. There's a stat that says the average successful entrepreneur that like gets through the, the dip of hard work and getting cash flow and getting startup happening and actually makes it to some level of success and sustainability has started 2.6 businesses. So any successful entrepreneur business owner that now has a successful business on average had at least one fail or two fail before they found the one that worked. I think that could be similar to YouTube as well. And it may not be that you actually have to have a different channel, but I think that should give you permission to like, what if my first videos suck? They will. Your first videos will be your worst videos. You know, you'd be terrible. But though, the, you know, your way to get to success, I heard one person put it this way. The, the recipe to get to success is suck, 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 cess. Your first three or 30 videos might suck. They might not be very good, but that's what leads to success. So start before you're ready, get clear on your niche, get clear on who your channel's for, what problem does it solve and get clear that again, if you want this to be financially viable, come up with a money plan, come up with kind of a business plan for your channel ahead of time to like, start with the end of mind, look down the road. What is it you want to build and start a channel intelligently and strategically by thinking through some of those things? I think it's key what you're saying about the ability to pivot that one out of those three businesses ideas is the one that takes off but there's two failed ones in there because so many people ask us like well i i have this channel already and like i don't know what to do with it so we're saying then don't do that channel like if if follow all of the advice listen to sean cannell and other experts and actually you know don't be afraid to pivot and to change into um you know after your 
taking in all of this advice. And so I think that one is really key for a lot of people listening because a lot of people are going to need to pivot after listening to a lot of this training. And so um, that takes us into point number three. Right? Yeah. So point number three is create a schedule. You know, what gets scheduled gets done. It's in a way also like create a system for how you're going to be producing content. Um, we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall mm -hmm. to the level of our systems. What's a system? Well, I am researching on this day. I'm recording on this day. My aunt's going to watch the kids Saturday morning so that I can film. Everything in life, I think for a life well lived that's effective and productive is going to be empowered by systems. And so having a schedule is one of those. I would recommend one video a week. And I would want to define that. One thoughtful strategic, quality, researched, crafted video per week. I don't mean it has to be edited or anything. Again, you may be able to just hit record, talk for seven minutes, turn the camera off and upload it. But for that seven minutes to be as powerful as possible, having a little practice, having a little planning, um, having some notes in front of you, thinking about what the title is ahead of time, thinking through it, prior planning prevents poor performance. And one of the biggest opportunities if you want to succeed on YouTube is consolidating time and saving people time. Here's what I mean. So a really successful personal finance YouTuber named Graham Stephan. One of the things he's known for is he puts out great research videos that are concise, clear, and they really take complex information and they make it simple. Well, what does he do? He's known for researching 20, 30, 40 hours for one video. If he researches and plans for 20 hours and the final product of his video is 10 minutes, it's one of the reasons why the video is so successful because we're all so busy in our lives. You're doing the heavy lifting. Again, even if you don't edit, if you take an hour or two hours or three hours to prepare and then all of that time preparing, you've consolidated it down into a three to five minute or a 13 minute video, you're doing a service to people. That's why people feel the value of it. And I've heard it said that the definition of excellence is doing the best you have with what you have right now. So excellence is a spectrum. Of course, if you're not comparing yourself to other people, you just want to beat your previous best. If you start messy, if you have a decent level of clarity of this is the direction I'm going, this is who my channel's for, what problem it's going to solve, and then you commit to once a week, a lot of things can happen. Momentum happens. You learn as you go. You start getting a feedback because you're putting outputs out there. Um, you're, you evaluate the results as you go and you are continuing to improve. We always say get 1% better. Baseline, upload one high effort based on the resources you have and the time you have video per week and commit to that. You're gonna see crazy momentum over the next year. If you're looking to get your first thousand subscribers or make your first $1,000 on YouTube, then join our free YouTube challenge that many other small creators have joined and seen tons of success. During this free challenge, Sean is going to share some of the best strategies for growing to your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, as well as making your first $1,000. Just go to tube1kchallenge.com or check the link down in the description. So point number four then, topics. I think that in 2024, one of the biggest mistakes that people are making is they're not knowing what matters most on YouTube. Because the creator who understands the viewer best wins. What's top of mind for people? It's the problem they're worrying about every night. It's their most, their highest ambition. It's one of their biggest problems. It's troubling them. It's causing conflict in their relationships. It's one of their desires. Like topic is just such, such a big deal. And if you talk about the right topic at the right time, look at anybody that covers trending news or something that is timely in the moment, the thumbnail might be terrible. Like all they did was get a few things in the title, right? Uh, to at least you just know what it's about. But the fact that you wanted that information right now, that story right now, so I think it's about topics. People are listening to this, right? Sean, I'm at zero. I'm starting from scratch. How do I get discovered? And yeah, and people don't know you and people are not searching for you and they're not looking for you. And why would they? Because they don't know you yet and you feel you're in ob obscurity. So what you want to be asking if you're starting a channel from scratch is how can I tap into influence that's greater than my own? Most people think I wish somebody famous would shout me out. I wish I could get a famous interview, but people don't realize that products are influencers. One of the ways I grew my brand was I talked about particular camera models. You didn't know Sean Cannell yet. You knew you were looking for a reviewer comparison of the Canon 60D. You found that video. You saw that that was my experience, video, you know, teaching how to use cameras, the best lenses. And then some level of connection happened there. And the influential thing was a search-based 
topic, was something that somebody was looking for. So I actually, starting a channel from scratch and even for established creators that want to continue to grow, I would not ignore search-based content. In a suggested world, and I'll explain what that is briefly, but search-based content is actually kind of a forgotten art, and it's probably one of the biggest opportunities for people in 2024. Yes, we talk a lot about pain points. So problem and solution. Your channel should identify a problem and... I'd also present the solution and every video should do that as well. No matter what, like channel topic, video topic, um, we always recommend that people think about problem and solution, right? Which is why you're saying like that search-based content is really gonna be the, where the money is for most people starting a new channel. And we do talk through all of that inside of our course, Video Ranky Academy. And so going deep into each one of those and the structure of each one of those videos is something that we can like walk people through as well as picking your right topic and all actually every one of these points we could go deeper in inside of our course. And so um, I think we'll have like a link in that if anybody wants to check it out, but you take us into point number five. Yes. Number one, courage, start messy. Number two, clarity, one video per week, or just get your schedule dialed in topics. And then finally, extreme focus. That's my number mm -hmm. five, extreme focus. And I learned this the hard way. So this kind of makes me think about my journey on YouTube. The first channel I started was in 2007 for my church. I started my personal channel. I started a Clear Vision Media channel for my business. And I started a channel called Think International with my friend Jeff Morris, which was like a faith-based channel. And out of Think International, I started getting questions about cameras and what gear we were using to produce those videos. So that led to the start of Think media, I was trying to actually simultaneously run all four of those channels. I was doing way too much. And that was not the only thing I was doing. My life is just as complex as anybody else's. I mean, I know people listen to this. It's like, you got stuff to do. You might've got kids, you got school, you got work, you're busy. When I think about extreme focus, I think that the problem is if you try and chase four rabbits, you'll end up catching none of them. Or you'll just be so tired and fatigued and you'll delay your eventual success because you've diluted your energy in four directions when you could have compounded it in one. So I think there's a couple of mistakes that people make when starting a YouTube channel. They maybe get an idea, they have a topic, but if you're listening to this, you're probably like me. You're creative, you have new ideas every day, you might have new ideas for YouTube channels every day, new businesses, new opportunities you see. You might be like, oh, I should talk about AI. Oh, I actually, I want to start a bone broth company. What? I want to, you know, start doing a book, a book club. I want to write a book. I want to write an ebook. And that's as I spin off. And that's not just YouTube. Because if you're listening to this too, you're like, maybe I want to create an online course. When am I starting my merch line? How do I start my Patreon? How do I? Slow down. Take a breath. Extreme focus. Mm -hmm. Chasing too many rabbits might lead to so much exhaustion so much discouragement, so much burnout that would have been avoidable if you guarded your focus. So I've heard focus stands for this, follow one course until successful, focus. Mm -hmm. What's the one channel you're focusing on? What's the one brand you're building? What's the one business you're building? And I'm actually pretty stunned, and I know that maybe at least half people listening to this though, they wanna start from scratch, but they want to start three channels because they're like, man, I got so many passions. But now that I've thought about how like the channel should have a clear who and a clear what, well, the answer must be then to just divide the things I want to talk about on three channels. That would be an answer for organization, but that's not the best solution for your sanity, your success, and your momentum. If you had to pick one, pick one. It's hard enough to make one business successful, why are you trying to make two businesses successful? And in 2024, we got more noise coming at us than ever before. There's more side quests on Instagram and distractions and more ads coming at you that you could be hit by and more business opportunities. Because even as you're starting a YouTube channel, again, you're like, oh, what? There's like new tools to make my merch? Which, yes, like eventually, you could make merch and you could get your t-shirt going. And, and you're on day one and you're like, should I use Patreon or should I use YouTube channel memberships? On day one, neither. You should start, get one video up a week, make sure your topics are good, get clear and like be consistent because you don't even have enough momentum yet to be like worrying about the full business development. I'm not saying put that in your business plan. It's great to have clarity of at least the general direction of the best ways to monetize your particular niche. But people get so distracted by so many different things and it delays success. At best, it delays success. At worst, it just wears you down too much. 
you can't think clearly. You got noise coming out. You're also, you're maybe watching too much content on YouTube. You're watching too many experts. You're reading too many books. You're buying too many books. These are like all things that I, <laughs> that I've done myself. You're, you're going too many directions at once. Let's make 2024 entirely different. Know the season that you're in. Keep it simple and focus. If you enjoyed this content and want to take your YouTube channel to the next level, just click or tap the link on the screen or go to tube1kchallenge.com to join our next live YouTube challenge. You'll learn our best tips and strategies that are working here at Think Media, and I think you'll love it.